So on this cover, there are screws here. It's gonna be covered underneath this lip. There's a screw there, there for the fan, there, way down there, and here. So six screws total for that. Set that off to the side carefully. Now we're left with this. We're gonna have to get to the front radiator. There's two. There's the main radiator right there, and then there's one underneath. Underneath here. This bracket sits underneath. All you do is push right here and right there, and it'll actually come right up like that. Okay, so next thing is remove the radiator fan. There's gonna be two clips at the bottom for coolant hoses on the bottom. So you have to unclip those from the bottom and then just your regular connectors for your fans. And then a bunch of these little clips, just unclip this harness. It just goes around right here, and tuck it down behind and then just pull straight back. Here's that bracket that you gotta undo for your auxiliary water pump. And now you have access or better access to those two coolant pipes right there. Those are the ones for the auxiliary cool, auxiliary um, radiator that you have to remove. Okay, so next you're gonna take your, um, I believe this is the cooler for the transmission. Anyway, you're gonna take a bungee and just strap it down. You're gonna see a bracket that goes this bracket the lines sit in here and you have to remove this up in order to get these lines free from the transmission cooler so then this will slide up very carefully don't break anything then you're gonna remove the upper radiator hose which is here, there's just a clip. Then you're gonna remove the lower, the upper little reservoir hose. There's a little clip there too. And you're gonna remove the sensor wire from the sensor. And you're gonna remove the, the lower radiator hose, okay? Now, what I'm trying to do here is save, save some money and not replace the condenser. Even though I do have a brand new condenser, I'm trying to save the evac and recharge part on this vehicle because the problem is see right see see these right there you're gonna want to maneuver it carefully out that way here's the radiator this is the radiator that sits behind the that auxiliary radiator in the front so just one here one here and one here it's very nice all one piece aluminum 
And now what I'm gonna to try to do is remove this auxiliary radiator from this car without removing the, they call this a capacitor, right? But this is just a, uh, a condenser and the receiver dryer is right there. So I'm gonna to try to carefully just leave this off to the side while pulling this up. Okay, so I was able to carefully maneuver the radiator out carefully this way so that you don't damage the condenser. Um, what I did was I just put a bungee on the condenser so it would stay far back. And um, next, what you're gonna wanna do is clean. There's a bunch, gonna be a bunch of debris and leaves, so I cleaned all that out on both sides. So basically it's a, it's a plastic bracket that sits like this and then there's a top cover. Um, so just do that. Here's the, oh, this is the old auxiliary, I guess, radiator you can call it. I believe this cools the secondary circuit. Um, I'll, I'll take a picture for you, but there's our damage right there. So this cools, I believe the, um, the DMEs, bank one and bank two, and the turbos. I believe that's the main radiator for the engine. So, but this you can just basically like bend, you can bend this back like this so that it's, it, go, it goes in like this and then you maneuver it in and, fo and forward. All right, so the radiator is in, in place. Um, on the bottom, there's gonna be this hose. So that's the hose where the clip is right there. You can just reach under, clip it in, and there's gonna be a tab on each side just to hold it in place. So make sure everything's nice and tight. So here's the auxiliary radiator, the new one that was broken. It's in. Just carefully maneuver those lines in. Um, then there's going to be a hose along the bottom, right there, that you just clip in, and there's going to be two tabs. So then let me just explain to you how this bracket works. So this bracket slides down, in, and then there's a little tab on the bottom right there, and then there's that clip, which is right there, so that clips in. So to remove it, you pry this up and then you push up on it towards towards the top of the car and it will come right out. Um, okay, so on this side, let me just show you real quick. So you got these hoses, you're gonna clip in the hoses first, okay? Then there's gonna be a little tab back here. Can't really see it, it's back there. That just slides over and then you'll see these hoses. First put them into the actual bracket themselves and then just you're going to press down and you're going to hear a click and then here all you do is just press these in there's little tabs here to remove them you press these tabs and then they come out so just push these in nice and tight and that's it just make sure everything goes back the way it was because uh, a lot of people just throw this stuff back together and then everything is rattling all over the place okay so at this point um the, rate, the primary radiator went in. You connect the temp sensor, the main low radiator hose. And on this side, you're gonna connect your smaller line and then the upper radiator hose right here. Make sure you clean the radiator from both sides while you have it out from any kind of debris. So this bracket here for your, I'm not sure 100% if this is a transmission cooler or oil cooler or something else, but the plastic bracket literally sits like this and it just clips in there and then this goes this way. And then now you can put the radiator in. I put it in too soon. Okay, so at this stage, everything is in. Don't forget that plastic bracket and that plastic bracket right there goes underneath the condenser and then it, this sits clips into the top part of it and it holds your 
this radiator in place, keep it from moving. Um, so and now, up radio hose, this hose. Now we can put the fan back in. Okay, so now um, the cooler is in. Um, I believe it's the transmission cooler. And then um, this bolt, as you can see, that bracket has to be flush. Don't forget there's two O-rings in there. You don't want to lose those. There's going to be a little bit of fluid in here that'll spill out. Just try to save as much as you can so you don't have to top off the transmission. Um, at this point, top is pretty self-explanatory. This bracket will go on next. Uh, I won't show you that. There's six bolts, three on each side. So one, two, three on this side, and then three on the other side. Um, one bolt there. I took off these bolts along the bumper, thinking that I had to remove this plastic cover, but you don't have to. So you don't remove these bolts by the bumper, you can keep those on. And then now all we do is connect the oil cooler um, along the bottom, fill the system. There's two circuits in this vehicle, so we're gonna have to bleed each one individually. And that's it. Here's the uh, oil cooler, and then here's your radiator, the new one that we installed, right there. This clip simply clips, or not clips, but there's four bolts on each side, two there, and then two there. I left them still in the place. And I believe they're Torx T30s. Um, what else? I think that's it. After this, just uh, fill the cooling system, both banks. There's two circuits on this car, don't forget. A high and a low, bleed the system. Um, I'll show you if I have time how to do that. And then uh, check for leaks, obviously. Don't put any of your panels back on and that foam piece, by the way, goes right here, so don't lose it. Um, what else? Here's where your clips in, the fan clips in one there and one there, and then the bracket for the water pump clips into the top right there. I don't know if you could see. And then there's a Torx T30 bolt on the bracket of the water pump holding it. And I think we're almost there. So you can hear the pumps running right now. And you gotta top off the cooling level. running cooling through here now too I can hear it if it's supposed to do that or not that loud noise maybe like a water pump that's faulty so here's our new auxiliary water pump two hoses on it one connector so what you do is first remove the tension off or remove the belt to gain access to it it's a t60 on a long extension, as you can see right there, that's your tensioner. Oh, what happened? Lost light. For that one, use a swivel, remove this bolt to give you a little bit of leverage. Let you use a swivel, push down on it, and it'll come, it'll come right out. After that bracket is separate from the top, you're gonna remove the three bolts 
three little Torx T10s that are holding the bracket to the pump to get the pump out. So at this point, um, the bracket is removed from the pump itself. And as you can see in there, try to zoom out. So there's the connector. So we're gonna remove that connector next. And then the hose, this hose, the one that's closest to us, the one on the front will be next so that we can uh, maneuver it out the way without removing pretty much anything else. But as you can see, there's a little connector there. So the oil pump is out. Um, first you undo the connector, then the lower hose, and then the side hose. Um, here's the new pump. You're gonna wanna remove this bracket before you install it to make it easier. Um, the only kind of difficult part will be to get the new clamps on. As you can see, there is the two hoses. Let me zoom out. There's the two hoses right there in the connector. So I'm probably going to use warm drive clamps just to make it easier to tighten them. They don't have to be super tight anyway. so. It'll be easier than trying to get that clamp tool in there. It's so tight. So I'll try to see what I can do here. But very minimal coolant comes out, by the way. Like literally barely anything came out. So you don't have to worry about adding a ton of coolant. So I managed to get the clamps on. As you can see, I just got to tighten them now. So that hose isn't on all the way. I still have to get her on. This one is on all the way. I'm going to get these on and then tighten it down. By the way, you can fish the connector out from under here. As you can see, it has that plastic tab on it. So you're going to pry that plastic tab out and then that will allow you to clip the connector back See how it moves now freely and once it's in what you do is you just take this plastic piece and you push it back in so the new uh, pump is in what I'm gonna do is connect it I'm gonna start the I'm gonna start the bleed procedure and while it's bleeding as you can see here's my clamps don't tighten these too much just barely tighten them because if you over tighten them you're gonna leak because it doesn't make a perfect circle. So we're gonna see it check for leaks while it's bleeding and connect the bracket um, while it's doing that. So the bleed procedure is running right now. The belt is still off the car because I wanted to check for leaks. As you can see, you can hear the pump running but there are no leaks. So that's a good sign. At this time, we can start putting the belt back to the vehicle and the bracket for the pump. See how quiet it is now before it was all loud? As the bearings inside were shot. Alright, so these two bolts are in. I'm doing a second bleed procedure. Usually you want to do two or three bleed cycles before starting the engine. Um, and then those three bolts are in. They're little torch T10s. Connector is in. Both hoses are in. Still not leaking, so that's a good sign. Um, this is what you use. A little swivel like this for the for the top bolt that one over there and then we're gonna put that bolt back for the charge air cooler intercoolers um, some of those tools you'll need is a, a little t10 quarter inch uh, this is gonna be a t30 a t30 on a swivel 
a pick for that connector, needle nose pliers to get the hoses on. Um, you will not need that be unless you're using the original clamps. And pretty much that's it. So there's a bracket. Part number, by the way, is right there. Now I gotta put the belt on and get my light out of there. Okay, so the tensioner is kind of a pain in the ass. But as you can see, there it is, right there. It's a T60 on a, you're gonna use an extension to get a breaker bar in there. You could just kind of wiggle it in there. And then you're gonna pry the breaker bar all the way back till, till it hits this hose right here. It'll even bend this hose a little bit, that's fine. And then you can actually slip that belt on nice and easy. So that's it. The last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is uh, scan the vehicle for any faults. Uh, to see if there's any issues before we had that fault code for the water pump. Looks like we're okay. Go ahead and start it. drive the car you're gonna to want to park it you're gonna to want to get it hot first check the coolant level after you park it it's gonna be parked for at least three four hours because it has to cool down and then only can you check the coolant level but it has to cool down a little bit so that you can uh, get the correct level and then that's it rescan for a fault code is one last time I would say